we've talked about this a little bit, but there's two, two sort of reasonably scientific papers by real universities that theorize two different things that are on Earth now may actually be aliens. Okay, okay. and I'm going to give you the two, and I'm going to let you choose which one because it has to be one of the two. It has to be an alien. Okay. 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 So one theory uh, is that our friends that we talk about, the cephalopods, including octopus and cuttlefish, um, are aliens because they're, they have 33,000 more uh, proteins in their genome mm-hmm. than anything else on Earth. They have mm-hmm. just all these magical powers. We've talked about them all the time. <laughs> We've um, talked about them being yeah. aliens before. Yeah, so the idea, I think, that this paper theorized was that they may have come over in frozen water on a comet mm-hmm. uh, as, as eggs, and then the octopus or cuttlefish, whatever, may have evolved from whatever that original little right. egg was. Right, okay. The other one, I'm, which I'm I really like. I'm familiar with that theory. Okay. The other one is the, the fact that mushrooms I'm very are, well versed are on from that outer theory. space. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Which is super interesting, and I, I found the shortest article I could, uh, and it's still very dense. <laughs> but theor- I, I can sum the, some yeah. of that up. Yeah, I, know, I know quite yeah. a lot about that. Well, look, you guys all know how much I love foraging and, and you know, mushrooms and mycology in general. Yeah. Um, You're the mushroom guy. Yeah, I mean, I, I think they're fascinating. They're delicious. I literally just had some for dinner so um, that I picked. <laughs> nice. um, but to, to sum it up, I think what is so interesting about mushrooms is, um, you know, living spores have been found and collected in every level of Earth's atmosphere, right? From, from mm. right here on the ground, way up in the sky, you name it, spores have been found. Um, but that's interesting. What, yeah, where, that. where it becomes like maybe they're alien. One is like they don't belong to any group, right? We call them fungus, but they don't belong to, you know, they're not a vegetable. Uh, it's not a fiber. It's not a protein. You know, it doesn't belong to any group. So it stands alone as a fungus. Um, right. The spores of a mushroom, which for those that don't know what a spore of a mushroom is, it's kind of like a powdered seed, if you will. Those caps of the mushroom that you see, Mm -hmm. under those caps, they release these microscopic spores that go into the atmosphere in order to colonize new areas. But those Mm. spores are electron dense, okay? Meaning, uh, well, we'll we'll circle back to that. They're electron dense, and more importantly, they can survive in the vacuum of space. They're the only thing that we know of, basically, that comes from Earth that right. can generate life that can survive in the vacuum of space. You can literally take those spores, put them up above Earth's atmosphere, bring them back, they land on the ground, new mushrooms grow. Additionally, That's their wild. outer layer is actually metallic and like purple, which is a color combo that naturally allows the, dis- the spore to deflect ultraviolet light. So in other words, if these spores get into the vacuum of space and get too close to the sun, they don't get, they can get fried by heat, in which case they have to be really close. But if they pass too close to the sun, their, their metallic exterior, their outer layer will deflect the ultraviolet light to keep them alive. Um, Hmm. And if all of this wasn't unique enough, that outer shell that I speak of, of the spore is the hardest organic compound that exists in nature. So it's like, you know, the size of it is hard to understand, but it's, that outer shell of the, of the spore, is, it's, it's harder than ivory. It's harder than any right. animal's bone. It's harder than any redwood tree. It's the hardest organic compound that exists in nature, period. So you've got these little microscopic seeds, if you will, that can mm-hmm. float up into space, right. deflect sunlight without damaging them, have this incredibly hard exterior. So say they, you know, say they impacted something, it wouldn't mm-hmm. damage them at all. And so the theory, and it's one that I love, not that I necessarily believe it, but I think is super fascinating, is that mushrooms could have come from another planet because they could survive for thousands of years drifting in outer space before entering into Earth's, Earth's atmosphere and then you right. know landing on the ground and creating these colonies and fruiting as mushrooms as we know it. Well, and let's, let's uh, dive a little deeper here. And one species of mushrooms legit makes you have out-of-body experiences where you traverse the universe outside of your mind. And <laughs> psilocybins, are, more than one, yeah, but yeah, psilocybins, yeah. yeah. But, you know, I mean, and they grow in shit. I mean, they grow in waste, <laughs> like, so it's true. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> that makes them aliens. <laughs> I'm just saying, they, they can survive and just on the waste of other, you know, mm-hmm. creatures or whatever, you know, so fascinating So, sorry, shit. I derailed your game, Patrick, but the game is pick which one could be from an alien Well, planet. I don't think we have to pick anymore. Okay. I'm going octopus. <laughs> Fuck off for us. Yeah, okay, okay. 
<laughs> well, you had that really interesting. We talked about it before, but a long time ago. But the uh, that theory about how mushrooms can or they potentially communicate via vast underground networks almost like a brain. They're the neural also, network. It's not just a theory. Yeah. That's 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 proven. That's mm-hmm. proven right. stuff. Yeah. And it's it's emerging Super science in a lot of ways. Totally. Um, I know Forrest knows a lot about it. I just uh, worked on a documentary for National Geographic and we met up with uh, some uh, some professors in uh, Louisiana who are studying that. Um, God damn it. Oh, what, wow. What is the name of that process, Forrest? It's a certain type of bacteria. The mycelium. Yeah. Yeah. A certain type of bacteria that allows um, basically tree roots that are all interconnected. Mm-hmm. Only oh. when this bacteria is pre- or this sorry this fungus is present, mm-hmm. another mushroom theoretically right. right or it's a fungus another alien um, same thing yeah when this fungal network is present on the roots it allows them to communicate in fucking crazy ways. Have I talked yeah. about this on Dude. the podcast? Uh, I, uh, not, I don't we, think we, so. we addressed this once, but let's get into it. So let me yeah, get, let me paint a little bit of a picture and then I want you to, yeah, to yeah. explain it further. I just have two examples that I'm fascinated by. You can no, explain how it actually works. So, well, I'll just explain. <laughs> so the mice, a, a mushroom, the thing that you see when you see a mushroom growing out of the ground is the fruit. Mm-hmm. It's like the apple on a tree below right. the ground. You have this massive organism, right? And this organism lives in symbiosis with tree roots. It needs tree roots in order to to live. That's what it feeds off of. It gets its organic nutrients through those tree roots. Tree roots. And that organism is called the mycelium. And it grows on all these tree roots and the tree roots grow and so on and so forth. So it expands. So every bit of earth you're walking on basically has mycelium, this mushroom organism living underneath it. And there's many, many different species, of course, right? Like porcinis and chanterelles and button mushrooms and so on and so forth. But they're, mm-hmm. they're more or less all interconnected through tree roots. So if you can conceptualize that, now, Patrick, please explain, you know, what you were going to say. Well, so basically the idea is these, they call them uh, like mycorrhizal networks, which I'm sure mm-hmm. is just a network of the mycelium, whatever. But uh, so they're studying how it's working in the Louisiana bayou, because, you know, the bayou has been so decimated and it's causing hurricanes to be worse for New Orleans. Losing land every year, et cetera, et cetera. So, but two stories that I think illustrate this that are really cool. So in tree root systems where the roots are connected and they have this mycorrhizal fungus on it, right? They've found that there can be like something called a mother tree, right? So if a tree, let's say one tree is just in a situation where it's not getting a lot of sunlight, it's not doing very well, these mother trees that are like the biggest, tallest tree will actually send nutrients through the network to a tree that's a fucking mile away. Mm-hmm. That's and crazy. provide it with nutrients to keep it alive. Dude, that's, wait, that's so. How does it? So it basically so communicating. sends its nutrients we, we don't down know through, is the answer. We, we don't know, know why they do it or how they how they know or why one tree tells another tree that it's in trouble or or yeah. isn't in trouble. We don't understand any of that. All we yeah. know is the only way they're interconnected is through mm-hmm. the soil and through the mycelium. Now get this. This gets wow. weirder. This is a fucking weirder one, right? <laughs> so in so there's some areas in Africa where they have figured out So giraffes will come by, or giraffes, so Forrest knows what I'm talking about. They'll come by and they'll start eating, you know, they'll they'll be eating all the leaves, right? They're eating shit. (laughs) They're they're taking away, you know, it gives more surface area for the sunlight. It's damaging to the tree. A certain type of tree, and I can't remember which one. Acacia. Okay, the acacia tree will start to produce a toxin once the the giraffes are eating it, and it'll make the, the leaves taste bad. Right, mm-hmm. so that the giraffes will eventually stop eating it. Obviously, this has evolved over many, many years, at least 10. Uh, <laughs> right? So right. what they've found is that in situations where the acacia trees have these mycorrhizal networks, giraffes are over here eating fucking this tree, and it will fucking start telling the other trees, hey, giraffes are eating me. And trees where the giraffes haven't even gotten there yet, half a mile away, will start producing the toxin in advance. Correct. So once the giraffes get there, they're just like, oop, bite, gross, next. Yeah, move on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's nuts, dude. It's like an internet. It's tree communication, and we don't understand it. No, I mean, dude, it's just like what you guys had uh, mentioned a bit the other day on on the last podcast about, uh, or no, it was in the, uh, the recap of 2020. We started talking about for a minute, just uh, like quantum entanglement, just for a second. Like just the fact that there's 
this, this, these things out there that we have no clue how they work still. I mean, we're just starting. Are they even like, I mean, Pat, you said they're researching that now. Uh, they've not researched this before. Is it just off the radar entirely, basically, because it's not that important? Or I don't, what's the deal I with don't that? think it's that new. The people that we were working with, the scientists were at Tulane University, and they're studying it specifically in the bayou, but it's pretty incredible. I mean, like, it you is. know, this all aired on the show, but, you know, she said the, the main researcher we were working with is like, this is super new. Like, we, we, yeah. we understand that we can test for this, I guess, mycelium or these mycorrhizal networks. We, there's it's a the way we can thing. test. The mycorrhizal network is yeah. just all the mycelium interconnected. They can test. They can see that it's there. They can see the effects. But the mm -hmm. specifics of how information is being transferred no idea. Between no tree idea. A and tree B a half mile away? Yeah. No idea. No fucking or, or, clue, man. Or, or, or why that information is positive versus negative. Like why one is saying give me nutrients and one is saying I'll send you nutrients. Or why one is saying I'm being eaten, produce toxin. Like we have no idea, right. right? And it goes back to that thing that I'm always harping on, which is like the world is so much bigger than we understand. It's like there's yeah. so much more than we can even conceptualize. All the fucking trees are talking to each other. You know, it's like... <laughs> right? it, with like, specifics. It, with it, specifics. It, it's it's not just like one detail. message. Yeah. It's like, hey, giraffe, uh, I'm pretty thirsty. Like there's <laughs> right. actual shit being beamed yep. around under the ground by trees, Straight which we up. don't even think can think or talk or anything. That is, should be the biggest news story ever in the history of the world. <laughs> That's the Agreed. only thing anyone should think about right now. That's <laughs> mind-blowing. It is mind-blowing. No I'm, I'm on your team. I agree. 